Hi, I'm Chris Stoner. I'm Jacob Allen. We're with XSA International. Today we're going to talk with you about a semi-controversial subject that's out there in the medical world and the tactical world. And what we get asked a lot is, look, we've just been involved in an active shooting situation. We have real human beings lying on the ground, bleeding, dying, injured, screaming. In the midst of the chaos, do you have time for putting on gloves? Do you have time for PPE and those types of measures? What do you think, Jacob? Uh, it's all about the patient and all about the situation. Um, I felt in the past that if I know the history of my patient um, coming down, you know, talking like blood history, which is sexual history, everything. But uh, the idea that, you know, when you see one of your friends bleeding, you're not really thinking about the, the body substances that you're going to be transferred and the, the molecular things that are going to go on in that situation. Now, admittedly, in, you know, in, in some situations, I didn't put gloves on. I knew the guy, hey, I'm, I'm going to get after it. And sometimes you can't feel certain things through your gloves. I'm a big proponent, always, if you don't know, glove up. It doesn't take that long. Go ahead and put those gloves on. When in doubt, PP up. But what are your experiences? Well, personally, my thought is that I'm always compelled by my heart to intervene where possible. So for me, I have to constantly fight my desire to just jump right in and I have to remind myself of the serious threats of bloodborne pathogens because yes, this was an individual that was in the wrong place at the wrong time, but that does not necessarily mean that this individual does not have HIV, AIDS, hepatitis C, uh, and these are all real world threats that we have to deal with whenever we're managing these types of patients. So for me, I always have time to don my BSI. Um, I may not go so far as to put on a mask or whatnot, but in most any tactical environment where I'm doing any kind of shooting, I always have some kind of a sunglass, or if that's not a sunglass, it's clear lenses, so that I can protect my eyes from shrapnel, from debris and dust and things like that entering my eyes. In the same way, that acts as BSI to keep bloodborne pathogens from entering into your eyes as well. If I'm not communicating, I've got my mouth shut. And the reason for that is because bloodborne pathogens entering into the buccal cavity can cause just as much damage as bloodborne pathogens on your hands, okay? So whenever you talk about BSI, you've got to be aware that just wearing gloves isn't necessarily enough. You're going to take that risk because that's who you are. But know what that risk entails and know how to mitigate that risk to the best of your ability. Try not to take a bath in their blood. If you have a squirting artery, put some pressure on it. Tell somebody else to put pressure on it while you're putting the tourniquet on. Don't sit there and get blasted in the face by blood. It's just not worth it. As far as gloves are concerned, man, I've run the gamut with gloves. <laughs> There are great gloves out there, there's also a bunch of trash, and I think it's just as important to know that, okay, one, I'm going to don my gloves, I'm going to use them as a barrier for those bloodborne pathogens, but also I'm going to know exactly how they're stacked in my bag, I know exactly where they're at, and I know what I need to use or I know what I need to do to put those gloves on. So that means that they need to be accessible in that bag. It's bad if you've got your gloves at the bottom of the bag and all of your stuff on the top, because then you're digging through a bunch of stuff that's supposedly sterile, no longer sterile because you've got it laying on the ground in pools of blood and you're digging around looking for gloves. Well, we hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any more questions, feel free to visit our website at www.xsallc.com. You can also hit us up on Facebook and uh, we'd love to see your comments, questions, or concerns.